This is for sure going to be my deck for the next format. This is one of my favorite decks ever since it came out. And thankfully, as I've been telling you, it's, it's worth investing in this strategy because this strategy keeps getting tons of love. And of course, I'm talking about Chimera and the Illusion strategy. And today we're going to be reviewing my deck for the upcoming format. Even if Beatrice gets banned, it's probably the only thing that will happen to this deck. And with the Fiendsmith engine at full power, tons of non-engine spots, and a lot of different creative ways to play, this is going to be the deck for me, for sure. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will show you the deck list. And of course, a very cool, interesting FTK combo later on in the video that is something that I've actually made a video about previously on the channel. And today we're going to be reviewing it once again, but with the Fiendsmith stuff. This is going to be the, the farewell for Beatrice, sort of. So, 40 card main, and it's relatively straightforward, but I made a few changes based on the recent games I've been playing with this deck. Um, three Apprentice, we do want to maximize on the ability to start the combo. So, obviously, Apprentice is not only a starter, but it's also a level 6, which is important to this deck, obviously. We're playing three Mirror Swords Knight, which is... <laughs> Could be your best normal summon at times, but not all the time. Sometimes you will want to summon Gazelle just to, to be able to play around things like Ash Blossom because this deck is more versatile now with the addition of Apprentice, with the addition of Fiendsmith, that you're going to be able to bait out Ash Blossom a lot easier at times, right? You could bait it out with a Fiendsmith, for example, or an Apprentice, and then be able to resolve your Mirror Swords Knight. But also with Imperm and Veiler, this card is less likely to get hit with it, especially if you can start with Fiendsmith and or Apprentice, right? So you want one of these to resolve, and you also have an ability to special summon the other. Of course, Kotal does get us to the one card combo and the other pieces, and I'm playing two Burfamat. I considered cutting this to one, but it can hurt the grind game. Um, I think the grind game of this deck is the main issue, in my opinion. And this is why I added another card that could deal with that. And then, of course, Barry's Statue of the Abyss, which is very good against Fiendsmith. And this deck can just put this up really, really easily and play around it. It's also a Fiend, which you have... Now you have a little bit more, but usually you have less. You have, like, more Beasts and Illusions, and then these were the only Fiends. Now you have this is a Fiend which is fine to get into the graveyard. And of course, the engine, the Fiendsmith Engraver. Hopefully this gets cheaper soon because this makes the deck tick. It was built for this deck. It's so, so good in the context of this deck. And we are playing one Lurry, but I'm also playing one Santa Claus as well because we are playing, this is first of all a Light Fiend, Right? Um, you know what this does probably from Castra Pearly format, right? This is essentially a Kaiju, puts itself in defense, and during your opponent's draw phase, they draw a card. Um, or during their end phase or your end phase, they draw one card, but it's not going to remain on the field. It's also giving them a Light Fiend, which might not be ideal. But we are, as you are seeing right now, not playing the Evil Hero engine. We are just playing three Fiendsmiths tracked. I think the Evil Hero Engine is cute, right? It's definitely cute. Not gonna say it's not, but I think it's too bricky. And there are already bricks in this deck that you don't want to draw. You don't want to see Birth of Man. You don't want to see too many normal summons. Um, I did consider playing Dark Fusion for a Dusted Gold, though, which is definitely a possibility. But because you're playing three tracked, every tract is a starter to your combo because it will get you to one of your Light Fiends. And basically Lurie, which can special summon itself. But if you already have access and you already have access to track, searching for a Kaiju for the follow-up or to break a board is really, really helpful. So essentially you have a Kaiju within the engine that you can search for. And instead of having, you know, the bricks here, you just have two more starters. We would have one track and two evil heroes that you can't really do anything from the hand with. But now you have just essentially two more starters, which I think is better and worth experimenting with. And then three Chimera Fusion to round out the engine. So this is the engine, and then we're playing, uh, of course, we have a bunch of non-engine to play with. So we are playing three Ash, three Valor, 
I am maining three Perulia. I think getting more cards in your hand is an advantage in this deck, and of course you can side it out. And um, this is obviously going to be replaced with a new one in, re in uh, I was going to say Reinforcement of the Army, in Rage of the Abyss. Three Imperm, one Called by the Grave, and one Pot of Avarice. You get so many monsters. This is also why we're playing a lot of like monster hand traps, so we can fill the grave going second or first, obviously, for this card. Your graveyard fills up like that, and you will be able to draw two, and you don't need most of your graveyard in the grave, right? Um, the Fiendsmith stuff shuffle themselves, obviously, but this card in the grind game is a real help, and this is obviously the 40th card. You can do whatever you want with it. If you don't want to play it, don't play it. You have noticed that I'm not playing Tau, the Master Chanter. The reason I'm not playing Tau is that even though Tau is an incredible card, it conflicts with the Fiendsmith engine. Once you activate its effect, you cannot special summon from the graveyard for the rest of the turn except for illusions. And obviously the Fiendsmith stuff summon themselves from the grave and they are not illusions, they are fiends. So I had to cut it, but again, you can switch it for the Avarice if you don't want to. Extra deck, kind of straightforward. Black Chroma, uh, one Chimera for the combo I'm gonna show you. And two Burfamet, obviously it is the better one in this deck. I'm unfortunately not playing the big one. I don't have room for it, but um, you could cut things from here if you want. One Magnum. This is a Light Fiend. Okay? <laughs> this is a Light Fiend. I have, in tournaments before, turned this into Requiem. It's kind of crazy. And then one Guardian Chimera. This is the Fusion lineup. One Wave King uh, High Caesar and one Beatrice. If this gets banned, nothing happens to the deck. It doesn't matter. And then for the Lynx, Requiem, Moon, Sequence, Muckracker. Very good for the grind. Summoning back a lot of power pieces, especially like Magnum and Perfumat. And then SP, Apo, and Chaos Angel. Now, let's talk about a bit of side techs that I'm always, I'm always happy that this deck can run so many just techs, right? Just interesting techs because you have access to summon a lot of things. So, of course, you have the usual suspects here, which are King Tiger Wanghu. Um, just an incredible card in several formats. Like for, for now, like in Snake Eye or versus Snake Eye, it is pretty good, to be honest. Like popping every single monster that you summon, including the Fiendsmith stuff, is very valuable. Quacky Miro Doom. No, I don't I haven't seen people talking about this card, but um, this card is good for possible future formats, good against you Bell. Basically, it negates the effects of light and dark monsters that activate during the main phase. And this effect doesn't activate, it only applies. So um, check me, double check me on, on like the current PSET. I'm not sure this card has one. But essentially, this is very good against Branded, Ubel, and also the Fiendsmith stuff. Like this will negate any Fiendsmith card, right? Because they are light. You can summon this the same way we summon any fiend beast that we want as like a, a tech, right? And we'll, we'll see that in a second. So Quirkamir or Doom, get this card just in case. I don't know if this is going to spike up in price, but I think it's very good to have also. Like it's beautiful shatter foil. Um, but I think I've been sitting on this for a while. I've been sitting on this for a while, and I think this is really cool. And of course, the card that you haven't seen is of course the Abels, right? This card is incredible. Don't take this out of your side deck. Like, this should be in your side deck no matter what your build is, right? Yeah, these are the techs. But there's also an additional tech here, which you might remember from a while ago. Protector of the Sanctuary and Disturbance Strategy. So back in the day when we kind of came up with this combo, it was a video we made a while ago. You had to play like three of this and Prosperity to get to it. Now, with Beatrice, if Beatrice doesn't get banned, this is going to be real. Like, this is going to be real and scary. Like, I don't like this. I don't like this. <laughs> but this is a, essentially a full hand loop FTK. If you don't know what this card does, uh, I will show you how to pull this off. But basically, your opponent cannot draw cards except during the draw phase. And this card shuffles their entire hand into the deck, and then they draw the same amount of cards. So essentially, it reloads their entire hand, mulligans the, the, the full hand. So... If you activate this and then get this on the board, they shuffle back everything, but they can't draw. Combined with the fact that Angel Blue Tears sets this from the deck with the Fiendsmith engine, 
it is relatively toxic. I don't think the deck needs it, but it is funny. So I do want to show you how to pull this off, and um, let's check this out. All right, so basically what you need is access to your Fiend's Smith Engine and access to your Sword Knight. So if you have Tracked as well, it will do most of it. If you have Cornfield Codal here, it will do that as well, right? And just an additional card for discarding. So let's start off with sending the Engraver to the Graveyard to grab ourselves a copy of Tracked. We're going to activate Tracked, go search the Lurie, and summon the Lurie to the field by its own effect. Now we're going to normal summon the Swords Knight, activate the effect, and we're obviously, we don't want to lock ourselves into fusions. So we are going to go ahead and search for Gazelle. Gazelle is going to activate, and we will be searching for the Chimera Fusion. Now, we're going to link off the Lurie and go into the Requiem, and the Requiem is going to activate to summon us another copy of the engraver from the deck. So far, so good. Now, we have a Beast and a Fiend on the field. We're going to activate the Chimera Fusion here, go for these two, and then summon a copy of a card that we will need for our opponent's turn, which is going to be Chimera the King of Phantom Beasts. Now, this will go into the graveyard, and then it's going to be chain one gazelle, just to make sure you chain block, because this effect doesn't matter, and then chain two to rip a card out of the end, the, your opponent's hand during the end phase. This will search you now an illusion monster from the deck, because it was sent to the graveyard as fusion material, and we're going to be adding ourselves a copy of Nightmare Apprentice here. We're not going to fire it off yet, we're going to use the effect of Chimera Fusion in the graveyard to put itself back into the hand once per turn, because we have Chimera. And then we're going to use the Fiendsmith Engraver here, shuffling back the Lurie into the deck. The summon itself, we're going to go ahead and link these two off for good old fateful sequence here. And then we're going to go ahead, activate sequence. And we are going to shuffle back the Requiem and the Engraver back into the deck. To summon a copy of a card that I think uh, should probably be banned, which is Fiendsmith Lacrima. Lacrima effect, gonna target the Engraver to summon it back into the field. Now, before we make a Beatrice here, we are gonna special summon the Apprentice, use the effect here, and search any Illusion monster from the deck. We're gonna go for the Cornfield Codal. This will protect our Beatrice, activate the Codal, search for good old Berthamat, right? Now we're going to activate Chimera Fusion here, fuse away these two into Burfamap. And now we have targeting protection. And we also have effect negation on the field, right? We have Kotal here, and we also have the Mirror Swords Knight. Now, what we will do here is activate the Burfamap as chain one, then chain two, this Burfamap is going to summon back the Mirror Swords Knight here. Burfamap is going to dump into the graveyard the protector of the sanctuary, send any fiend from the deck. Now we can go ahead and make Beatrice here. And Beatrice is gonna detach the engraver to send Angel of Blue Tears from the deck to the graveyard. And now we just use these three to get an Apollosa on board. So that way we also have an Engage for a Bestial or a Bell or a Didi Crow on top of it. And because Lacrima went to the graveyard, we can shuffle back the sequence and burn for 12, burn for 12, banish the Angel of Blue Tears and set the Sturman strategy directly from the deck. So during your opponent's turn, this is what you were gonna do. You are, you need to summon Protector of the Sanctuary. Now you can't activate the Sturman strategy while it's on the field because your opponent cannot draw, so this will be an illegal activation that cannot resolve. So what you have to do, actually, is activate Disturbance Strategy, but then immediately, in the same chain, Chain Chimera banish itself to summon the Protector of the Sanctuary. Now, on resolution, this will be on the field, and your opponent shuffles their entire hand into the deck, and they cannot draw. You still have another targeting negate, and a negate, and an Apollosa for three negates on top of this, and... This is all considering that Beatrice doesn't get banned. Hopefully it does, because I think like nobody wants this in the game, 
and this is the perfect time to hit it without hitting the actual new cards. So this has been my camera review. Thank you so much for watching. Leave your comments below on what you think about this deck. I think you definitely, like this FTK is just funny, right? It's just funny. I don't think the deck needs it. I think if Beatrice gets banned, nothing happens to this deck, which is excellent. Like this is the deck that I want to play if something like this happens in the ban list. Don't forget to leave your comments, your thoughts. Let me know what you want to see else on the channel. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.